this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I do a round brush design on this large rock. I am actually going to be painting it on the top here and looping it down in the front here because I figure it'll sit and you can actually see most of the, the top of it is the primary area that you'll, you'll see but then you can actually see a little bit in the front as well. Perfect item to sit on a shelf, you know, any kind of a hum decor piece, even maybe use it as a door stopper. It's, you know, really a variety of things that you can actually do with these. All right, so for the painting, I'm going to be using two A Magic round brushes, a number 10 and a number 6, and then an A Magic flat brush, which is a number 4 and a number four Deerfoot Stippler. Paint I'm using is all folk art paint, combination of enamels and multi-surface. I'm going to be using Wicker White, Burnt Sienna, Skullbush Yellow, Red Violet, Forest Moss, Lavender, and Thicket. And I apologize for the dog. I feel like I never can do a video anymore without the dog barking for one of them. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to begin with the bigger round brush, which is the number 10. I am going to show you quickly how I'm unloading this, but I won't be able to show you the whole thing because I don't have a lot of space here. I am going to load the brush with the red violet, and I'm just getting it good and loaded, and then I'm going to tip it into the white and proceed. Now, I will probably maybe switch it out a little bit here and do the lavender with the white and vice versa and you'll see what I mean here okay I'm gonna start down here and the reason why I decided to do this uh, type of a flower on here is because it's such a rough surface that I thought if I tried to do any kind of stroke work you know my regular uh, trying to wiggle brushes and all that, it wouldn't work very well. So that's the reason why you're going to see I'm doing this type of design instead. All right, so I'm basically just pushing the brush down and pulling it. If I feel like it needs to have more, I'll come back, add some more white or another color, and proceed. And I'm intentionally putting these close together on top of each other just to keep the design uh, more of a cluster of flowers instead of individual flowers, if that makes sense. Again, this, this rock is very pitted. But I was looking for stones that I could actually have stand on their own and create actually I was going to do house designs on them and I still might on one other one because I did do a, a floral design on one of the other ones and it turned out pretty but the other one I was looking at them and I thought you know what it would probably be a cute house so I think I might do it as a house And again, you just kind of have to work with it because it is so pitted. And like that one doesn't have any white in it. And I also turn my brush the other direction too. So if I'm doing it one side, I can actually turn it and add the paint from the other side of the brush. So I'm going like that and then I can turn it and go this way. And if I feel like I didn't get it pointy enough, because I really didn't get this one pointy, then I'll add more paint to it. 
and work it out. Yeah, I mean it. These are just very loose, loose flowers, and that's what their intention is. Now I can actually go the route of putting all white and then tipping it with a color. I can do that too. You really can go any direction with these. You know, just to make them stand out. Like that. If you feel like you need to get some more white in there, you can do it that way. Or maybe even need to get some more violet in there. Do a different color. Make it stand out a little bit more. If you feel like it's getting too mushy, which this one looks like it is for some reason, just clean it up. That's all you have to do. Alright, so what I'm going to do is come up here. I'm going to go ahead and fill my brush more with the red violet. Come up here towards this top and then put in, you can even do smaller little strokes. They don't all have to be big like that. And come in here, add to it, and then I'm going to put maybe a cluster of three if I can fit them in here, up here. Again, I can do a little bit of the lavender just to kind of mix it up a little bit. And if you don't want to mix the colors up, don't. You know, you can do it however you want to. If you don't like that look, that's fine. But I like, I like just to have a little bit of a different look here. And I think I'm going to just try to do a really small one up in here. And if you can't get all the petals in, that's fine. You can just actually kind of butt them up to, to the flower beside you. Or beside it, I guess it's not really beside you, beside it and make it look like it's just kind of fitting in there. I'm going to try to get the petals in though if I can. I might have to turn it a little bit to clean it up. All right, maybe add a little bit more white. And you don't have to have a specific amount of petals either. This is just kind of a made up design. So I'm not trying to create anything in particular. So I don't want anybody to say, well, that's not a true blah, blah, blah. Well, it's not really anything in particular. It's just a design. All right, so then the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to come down here because I just want to have just a little one down here. And it's coming off the ledge. So, oh no, it's falling. It's really not. And you can just go over them if you want. You can leave a little center or you can leave it open. doesn't matter. All right, so I like that. So then I am going to come with the other little brush. It's another round, it's a six. I'm going to do the same thing as far as loading it with my paints. And I'm going to try to just bring it down. So I'm going to be real careful here. Bring it down into here. Try to hook them up. You know, they're all part of the same flower. So I'm basically doing the same loading style, just using the tip of the brush there right now. And I can come back in here, add some more green. Just keep adding. And then I'm going to do a, a leaf design. I have a heart. I'm not real good at the leaves with these, but I'm going to do one that just kind of comes back towards the plant. 
do another one this way and I'm just adding colors very loosely all right so anyways you can you know kind of bring these out like they're more of a well, I didn't have like a filler leaf maybe I'm just flattening them and pulling them back something a little different I'm just going to do these in a few spots um, and just bring them back just again just something a little different not your normal leaves that I do let's bring them back into this one If you're new to my channel, um, just understand if you would that I do uh, create designs that are meant for the beginner painter. Something that's easy to do, not difficult by any means, and it's not meant to be difficult. I like to provide ideas and designs that anybody who wants to learn how to paint can do. They're very simple. And that way, you know, a lot of people feel like they cannot be creative. And I don't believe that. I believe that anybody can sit down and do at least some type of art, whether it's, you know, you don't have to be great at it. The main thing is that you like it. And I know sometimes we get lost with that because some people are very critical. But that's how I look at it, is if you like what you're doing, you like what you're creating, that is the key. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be Mozart or, or not Mozart, that's a, oh my god, I can't believe I just said that. You don't have to be you know, Picasso or, you know, that kind of an artist to be creative. So I'm just kind of going over some of these just to kind of fill them in a little bit and just add some layers to them. Again, just making them just a little differently. And I am going to bring in my trusty old flat brush here in a second. And this is another way too you can do them. You know, if you want to do them, I just create leaf shapes. This kind of just gives it a another look. You don't want it to get too much together here. Or it's just gonna be a mess, but you can see it's just a different style. So I just want to put a few more just around here. And you could even just start with one color and layer it if you wanted to, if that helped you with it. Like I said, this rock is so bumpy that it's kind of hard. May not have been the best, the best choice, but I like it. Alright, let's just see where else. And we can just go into putting in some flat. You know what I'm going to do next, though, before I proceed with that, let's go ahead and put the centers in. Using my little number four Deerfoot stippler, and I have the front loaded with the burnt sienna, the back with the school bus yellow, and then I'm just going to come in here and start pouncing. Again, I don't really care how precise these are. I'm just making them more loose. A looser center, if that makes sense. And if you want them to go a certain direction, you can. You know, want to look like there's some movement. 
like these are kind of maybe heading downward. If you can see those. Then you can put those colors accordingly. Okay. And then come here. So I want to make this one look like it's coming down off the cliff, as I mentioned before. So I'm just pouncing it. Like I said, you can do it to where it's precise. You know, meaning that, you know, they're all the same, very similar or whatnot. They're similar, but I, I just like them to be really kind of unique. I don't want them all the same. There's a certain way like you could go like this and just kind of go around and you're going to get a certain type. I'll have to show you sometime. But I'm just tapping them in. Tap, tap, tap. And then do this one. Now this one's going to probably pull some of the purple into it because it's kind of really, it's wet. Doing wet on wet. You want to give it some dry time? You can. For the purpose of this video though, I am not giving it dry time. And I'm just doing just really random hits here. Because I want them to be very loose. Alright, got it. Alright, so let's go ahead. I'm going to double load. I do one side, one color, one side the other color. Do my blending strokes. Now, like I typically do, in a lot of my videos. I don't just do one one or two colors in my leaves. I a lot of times have three or four. That's just how I roll. And I can just, you know, put some little things coming out from there. You can even throw some white into this if you want. more yellow and the green. You can even add some brown because then that will make it more of a olive color. And then just how these come down here. These aren't too bad to do on this surface because I can just take my brush and fill it in a little bit. But you just have to keep that in mind that the surface is not flat. That makes it a little bit more challenging. This one I did add some white to it. I just like just to do it randomly. It is, you know, it's one stroke, but it's my stroke. You know, it's really not a set uh, you know, it's more of a combination of how I do it and not exactly one stroke. But I like, I like a lot of leaves, guys. Sorry. If you don't like a lot of leaves, then you probably need to adjust your, your uh, design a little bit because I do like a lot of leaves. So I'm just putting it down here and maybe dragging some more over here. And then taking some green and putting it through there. Get a little third leaf right here. Just kind of bringing it down the side. And if you get your brush too full of paint, just wipe it off on a paper towel. It doesn't have to be glopped with paint. You know, some people really like a lot of paint in their brush, and you're supposed to have your bristles loaded with a one stroke, probably at least three quarters of a way up the brush. But again, that's really a matter of your what you're comfortable with. So right now I'm just doing like the forest moss and 
light. But you can see how packed this is, right? See, I'm trying to do this, and it's got a lot of bumpies. So you can just take it and kind of fill it in. It's no biggie. And then just do some holes coming out from here. But it's kind of fun just to have some different colors of leaves. They're not a big variation, but they're still a little bit different. And you can do, even if you want to put a little bit of purple into some of your leaves, you can do that too. And I think that's pretty. Just a pretty little stone. I'm going to bring some more of these down here. You can see what I'm doing. And again, this is the forest moss and white, the wicker white. And then just bringing them down. Just doing some blending strokes. I don't want it to be too jumbled up here. A little hard to see, but I think it's pretty. Like I said, you could, on the green side, the darker green side, add in a little bit of the, the uh, you know, one of the purples. This one is the violet purple. Or, no, I'm saying that wrong. Red violet. I knew I was saying that wrong. I think that doesn't sound right. You can do that. It just gives it a little bit more color. Do some little pulls into your piece. And there you have it. Now, you know, if you feel like you want to get, you know, a little bit more color on this with all the leaves, you can. I like it the way it is, so I'm just going to leave it as such. But there you have it. If you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and before you leave, make sure you share this on your social network with all your family and friends. I would greatly appreciate it. Until the next time, you stay safe and healthy, and have a good one.